Nuti in Helsinki, Finland. Hi, Paul. Hey, Nuti. I have really enjoyed binge watching you and Chris's videos. <laughs> Chris is great. Thank you. Uh, and I've learned something new in every video. One thing you have talked about is that audiophiles want the music to be reproduced as authentically as possible. Wouldn't that then mean that they want as flat of an output as possible? Meaning that studio monitors would actually be the best product to use as an audiophile. Why is this not the case? Thanks a lot. Well, first off, yes, we want loudspeakers that are as flat as possible. That's a great goal. That's something that we definitely want. If you look at our Aspen line of loudspeakers, they are some of the flattest on the market. They're flat within about 2 dB, which is pretty darn amazing. I don't know that there are many studio monitors that are more flat. There are certainly those that are about the same. So if we have, just as an example, PS Audio's Aspen speakers, very flat. Studio monitors, very flat. Why pick one over the other? Well, they sound very different. How can that be? Well, one of the ways that we have to think about this is that plus or minus 2 dB is a big swing. Imagine a power amplifier or a piece of electronics that had a 1 dB swing. You'd be horrified. When we put out specs for amplifiers, they're flat to within a tenth of a dB, sometimes just flat. I mean, you, it, we can't even measure it. It's because that's standard with an amplifier, but not a speaker. Speakers are relatively flat. So when a speaker, we have to give some consideration because 2 dB, 3 dB, even 1 dB, which I've not seen one that is only 1 dB, it's minus 2 dB here, plus 2 dB here, you got a total of 4 dB. That's a lot of range. Where is it not flat? Where is it bumped up? Where do the crossovers meet? What kind of phase anomalies do we have where those crossovers meet? What do the drivers sound like? A planar driver, like we use in the Aspen speakers, a planar driver is very transparent sounding, very quick. Compare that to a dome, which has other characteristics, right? Better dispersion, but not as quick and not as transparent. So you're giving up this, you're getting that. It's all a trade-off, right? Those choices that are made are made by really talented designers like Chris Brunhaber. Chris is a master, one of the best I've ever seen, and I've worked with some of the best people in the world, and Chris outshines everyone I've ever met. He's a master at it, but he's not infallible, and his designs aren't perfect. They can't be. So we design speakers to make the best musicality on the largest selection of music that we can find. A studio monitor has a completely different goal, not one that is up for my tastes in listening or mixing or mastering, but that's just me, right? So the quick answer is you have to pay attention and, and know how they are voiced. Are they voiced to be exceptionally musical in a home setting? Or are they voiced to be exceptionally flat-ish sounding in a studio condition? And for me, listening at home, I'll take the former. Give me musicality, give me disappearing speakers, give me excitement so I can lust over the music that I listen to.